we doing, everybody? And welcome to Wisconsin Sports on the Go with Trage. I'm your host, Trage. It is Friday. The sun is shining. It is a fantastic day, setting up a fantastic weekend here in Wisconsin, right? We got they're talking a little cooler today, but I heard 70s over the weekend there. So, I mean, I can only imagine some yard work here and there. Everybody's going to be getting out and about. It is a great time of year right now here in the great state of Wisconsin. And lots of sports going on. Brewers sadly rained out yesterday, but back in action this weekend here. They're going to have a split. They're going to have a doubleheader there with the Reds later on this season. But yesterday, too much rain in the forecast. I believe it didn't stop raining there until like 4 o'clock. What last time I knew anything. So, Brewers, move on. They're going to be taking on the Orioles here coming up this weekend. We're going to look at that game. We're going to look at the Bucks schedule. We're just going to jump around a little bit today and check out how Wisconsin sports are faring this time of year here. So, right away, I there was one thing yesterday that happened. I heard the news, and I didn't know, I, I, I didn't know how to process it. And that was the passing of O.J. Simpson. And, it, 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 you know, everybody out there is going to have their own opinions on the whole situation and how people should feel and everything like that. I get that. I get it 100%. I do feel for the family, you know, and you if you don't feel bad for the family that's sitting there grieving right now, I okay, that that's... That that's that's your own thing, okay. And I'm not asking you to agree with me on that statement, but I do feel for the family because they are going through a tough time right now. So, with that being said, prayers to the family. Now, in his career, he was a very good football player. Afterwards, to watch the career spiral that was a promising life that went, I mean, downhill very fast. That's all you can say. That's all you can say. So there there really isn't, I mean, much to say on the situation. Not much that I want to say. Not much that I want to talk about. Just to mention the passing of O.J. Simpson. That's all. That's all I want to do on the show here. I, I've thought about it in my own head, what to say in this situation. But I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit here and, you know, Bruce Jenner this thing, right? Because Bruce Jenner had to come out and said that, uh, I mean, basically just saying good, just good. And, you know, people like that where Bruce has done some bad things in his life too, or whatever, you know, his, her, whatever you want to say, has done some bad things. And there's a lot of famous people who have done some bad things in their life. Now, I'm not condoning what OJ did in his life. That's not whatsoever what I'm doing right now. What I'm saying is is that seeing all those on social media yesterday was interesting to me. It was, you know, and there was a lot of people who got on that uh that it was a tweet by Bruce there saying that. And there's a lot of people who got on the case then. And they said, uh, you don't have much you can talk about there. It's just one of those situations where you really don't know how to feel in that situation. Just because of everything that happened. So everybody's going to have their opinion. They're going to feel one way. They're going to feel another way. But the way that I feel is I do feel for the family. The family that is grieving right now, I do feel for them. So that is all I have to say on that situation. But with that, getting off of that, getting off of that, I didn't I didn't want to get into it too much. You know, there there isn't much to say that everybody hasn't already said in their own way, shape, or form. I just wanted to mention it here on the show and just, you know, basically just say that to the family, I am sorry. To the family that I am sorry. And I hope that th- they all get better with time here. That's all I can say to that whole situation. But with that, I want to get into the Brewers here because the Brewers, like I said, got rained out yesterday there, last game of that series in Cincinnati. So they did, however, get the 2-1 to one series win against the Cincinnati Reds there. So good stuff there against the Cincinnati Reds. Now they'll move on and they'll take on the Baltimore Orioles. That should be a fantastic series. We're talking about a series where we're going to see Corbin Burns. We're talking about a series where we're going to have the number one prospect 
in all of baseball, going up against the number two prospect in all baseball, Jackson Holiday, Jackson Churl. This could be a fantastic series here. Brewers, they first game's tonight. First game is tonight here. It's going to be a 6-0-5 start in Baltimore there. Freddie Peralta taking on Wells for the Orioles in that one. Looking at a little bit of the matchup history of these two teams. The Brewers with Peralta. Peralta's seen some of these guys in the lineup for Baltimore. Looking at guys like Urias and Santander. Uh, Adley Rutchick and O'Hearn. Mountcastle, Monteo, and Hayes all have had experience against Freddie. Only one of those guys, two of those guys, sorry, two of those guys have had any kind of success against Freddie Peralta. In two at-bats, Hayes has got a 1,000 batting average, and in two at-bats, O'Hearn has got a 500 batting average. Outside of that, zeros. Zeros across the board, so good stuff there out of Freddie Peralta. Guys have seen him, but hey, not much success. That's what you love to see there. Looking down at the Brewers going up against Wells, only a few guys have actually had time against Wells there and no success. Adamus, Bowers, and Sanchez, all from their AL time there, all with no success against this um, Baltimore Orioles starting pitcher in Wells here. So good stuff there. 6.05 start tonight, and that will be on Apple TV+. Plus. Another season, another year of Apple TV. I can't wait. I can't wait. Just to watch it, I got to get another subscription. I don't use Apple TV besides watching the Brewers. I got it last year, and it was just to watch, like, what, six, seven? I, I believe 155 of the 162 games for the Brewers are on, uh, or 155 of the games are on Bally. So then you take those other, what, seven? Seven games there, and though between those seven games, I believe the Brewers are only on ESPN, like, one time. So you knock that down to six. So the Brewers will be on Apple TV about six times is what I got out of that there. So, I, I don't know. A lot of people don't like the outside um, the outside providers like Apple, Peacock, everything like that. I get it. It's just another thing to have. But this game by the Brewers will be seen on Apple TV Plus there. So, Brewers, Orioles tonight here, 6.05. Tomorrow, that game will be a 3.05 start. This could be a good one here. D.L. Hall facing his former former team there. Going up against Kremer for the Orioles in that one. You wouldn't expect many of the Orioles guys to have experience against D.L. Hall in games, but they've seen him before. They've probably faced him in live at-bats before, so they know a little bit of what this guy's got here in uh, D.L. Hall. For the Brewers, some of them have seen Kremer before. Adamas, six at-bats, one home run, one RBI there. Bowers, six at-bats, two RBIs, a home run. Uh, Monasterio, not much success there. Yelich, three at-bats, not no success. And Sanchez and six at-bats is 167 there. So Brewers have seen Kremer just a little bit. Both relatively younger. This should be a very good pitching matchup on Saturday there for the Brewers. A 3.05 start there. That one will be back on Bally. It'll be on Bally. WTMJ 620 there, the Brewers Radio Network. It'll also be on the Brewers Radio Network for that Friday night game, for tonight's game here. So if you don't have Apple TV, you still want to get tuned into the game there, just turn on the radio. Turn on your radio, you'll hear the voices of, I would. I don't think Brian Anderson is back with the broadcast crew, so you will hear the likes of Lane Grindle and I believe, who was the other guy that's on, Mauer? I can't remember the other guy that's off the top of my head right now. No Bob Euchre. That's all we know. No Bob Euchre. Going to be there for that one on the road. On Sunday, though, the Brewers, this is where they're going to face their former ace, the former Cy Young winner for the Brewers. 12-35 start for that one. Colin Ray will be going up against Corbin Burns in a battle of, man, that could be something. Burns on the year, 2-0, 1.93 ERA, 20 strikeouts. Colin Ray, 2-0, 1.64 ERA, and 5 strikeouts on the year. Looking at the matchups here, the Ray are the Orioles against Colin Ray. Not much success again for this Orioles team going up against them there in limited action. Urias has got a 500 average. McCain's got a 500 average. And Hayes also has 500 average. All in two at-bats there. Outside of that, Nobody else really with any kind of, uh, not a lot of experience and not a lot of success against this guy here. Looking at the Brewers, as you would expect, not many guys in this lineup have experience outside of Reese Hoskins. 
He's got four at bats and a 250 average. And then Gary Sanchez in two at bats, he's got one RBI and a 500 average. So this is going to be, this game is going to be something to watch. You have in this series, you're going to have the likes of DL Hall facing his old team. And you're going to have Corbin Burns facing his old team. Joey Ortiz facing his own his old team. It it's gonna be something. It, it is gonna be something there. I wonder how well you know, you always get those feelings when you watch games where guys are going up against their old clubs. And it's like, oh, he's gotta prove something here. He's gotta show him like you should have never gotten rid of me. You want you should have kept this thing around, you should have paid for this, everything like that. So it's definitely gonna be a great series there to watch that aspect. To be honest, I hope the Brewers just hit the crap out of Corbin Burns. Got to be honest with you. I hope they hit the crap out of Corbin Burns, and we can just say to ourselves, yeah, that's good with me. That's good with me. I'm all good with that. I mean, I, you know, Burns, <clears throat> he he did good with the Brewers, had a great career with Milwaukee, and we knew he was going to want more money. That That's plain and simple. He was going to want more money. The Brewers' ownership said, we aren't going to give you more. They, I mean, they turned down and trying to get his uh, in court there in arbitration court so we knew he was going to be gone anyways brewers trade him away i i just don't really know if there can be that hard of feelings i guess you could say like i i i 100 can see where you might say ah you know there's gonna be some bad blood everything like i i mean it's not like craig council right craig council left and he went to the cubs like that's bad blood but this is a guy in Corbin Burns who got traded away simply because the Brewers weren't going to be able to afford to pay him. And you want to be upset at the guy, but at the same time, it's like, I can't really, I, I can't, I can't knock the guy for wanting to get what he thinks he's worth, right? It, and because if we knocked Corbin Burns for that, then there's a lot of guys out there, the bigs, that we should be knocking for that same, I mean, that same thing. You look at a lot of the good pitchers out there. You look at a lot of good hitters. I mean, you look at Shohei Otani's contract and Manny Machado and Bryce Harper. And I mean, you could go all the way around the board and look at these guys' contracts and say they got what they thought they like, what they deserve. Now, do I believe that some of these contracts are what anybody in baseball deserves? No, no, I, I don't believe that. I, I've always been, I've always been a stickler towards guys who, I mean. Yeah, according to the market and according to money and everything like that, that's the contract they're going to get. I get that. I'm not, don't get me wrong. I 100% get it. But it's also one of those things where like, what does that guy need that much money for? What what, what does he need that much money for? And it, does he, is he really working for that money? You know, it, it's, it's all kinds of things like that, that cross your head when you think of these big money deals. But I don't think there's going to be any bad blood. I don't. Uh, Brewers, I don't think that they, I, I personally don't hate Corbin Burns simply because he went to the Orioles on a trade because the Brewers weren't going to pay him. I, I don't hate him for that. I don't, I really don't. I, there's, it's like Josh Hader. I mean, and that was a surprise trade. That was a surprise trade that, that had nothing to do with the guy wanted more money at the time. That was a surprise trade, but it's like that. I don't hate Josh Hader. I don't. He went to a different team. We knew we weren't going to be able to pay him. Maybe he knew that he was getting traded. Maybe he didn't, whatever it was. But I I don't hate guys like that. I don't. Now, Craig Council, you want to dislike him for his move? He was a free agent. He had his choice to come back for the Brewers, and they were going to pay him record money or go somewhere else, and they were going to pay him record money. He chose else. And that that's that's bad blood. That, that ticks a guy off. That ticks players off. Management, fans, doesn't matter. Ticks them all off. Now, in hindsight, though, would I be okay if the Brewers completely lit up Corbin Burns? I guess. 100%. I'd be A-okay with that. I would be A-okay with watching Christian Yelich go 4 for 4 with two home runs and just launching him out of there. And seeing some of these guys, and Joey Ortiz taking them deep. That'd be awesome. Watching Joey Ortiz take them deep and saying, ah, you picked these guys over me. That would be fantastic. Now, will it happen? We don't know. We don't know. Corbin Burns has been pitching pretty well this year. I don't know. I don't know. But it's going to be a fantastic series. Two heavyweights, two young. You know, when you look at the Orioles and you look at the Brewers, two young, very good, very talented teams. You know, with a lot of speed, a lot of, 
I, I wouldn't say a lot of contact guys, or not a lot of contact, not a lot of power guys. I'd say more contact guys. So guys who are going to get on and they're going to try to steal bases. Guys who are going to try to move the lineup. Stuff like that. I think that's what you're going to see a lot of in this series. And two good bullpens, two pitching staffs that, I mean, you're going to get the top three in the Brewers rotation in this series here with Colin Ray and Freddie and D.L. Hall. I mean, way, way Miley pitched the other day when she stop three. No, I mean, I, I get it, you know, but you're going to see the top three in the Brewers rotation in this series. Now that Freddie, Freddie was supposed to pitch game four of that red series, but his start got pushed back. So now we get to see him here right away. That should be, it should be a fantastic series all the way around. So Brewers, that'll be the weekend slate there. 6.05 tonight here. It's 3.05 on Saturday and 12.35 on Sunday. The Saturday and Sunday games will be on Bally Sports Wisconsin, also on WTMJ 620. The Friday night game will be on Apple TV Plus and also on WTMJ 620. If you don't want to get Apple TV, if you if you're if you're one of those guys who says I am not getting one of these outside subscriptions, I'll just listen to it on the radio. That's where you gotta check it out there. Check out Lane Grindle there on the radio. He'll get you through it. So with that, staying with baseball. Well, first, let's get to a couple of our sponsors here quick. We talked a little bit there about the Brewers. I gotta get to a couple of our sponsors here quick. First game day supply in on Alaska. Do you have a sports club or team? Are you looking for some custom uniforms or apparel? Check out the awesome crew at Game Day Supply in on Alaska to help your team get the sweetest gear. Find them on Facebook at Game Day Supply or online at GameDaySupply.net. Also, sports scenes, sports cards, and memorabilia. Stop in there in the Marshfield Mall and see Al. He has everything you need from sporting cards to memorabilia to jerseys to model stock cars. He's got it all down there at Sports Scene in Marshfield. Also, Marshfield Motor Speedway is located just three miles outside of Marshfield on County Road H. Stop in there for some family fun over this next summer and fall. Find the schedule. You got to get down there. Find the schedule on Facebook. Just search Marshfield Motor Speedways. Also, check it out online. Just search Marshfield Motor Speedways there. Go to the website, find the schedule, and plan some fantastic summer days and nights down there at the track. But with that, I got to get to the Fresh on the Farm report there. Fresh on the Farm report, we have the Nashville Sounds right now. They are sitting at 5-6, and six, and they've had some guys hitting pretty darn well for them to start out this young season. Eric Hayes, 333 down there right now. He's got a home run for this team. Tyler Bla- and four RBIs to go along with that. Brewer Hicklin, he's hitting 306, one home run, five RBIs and 11 hits. And Tyler Black, he's hitting 270 right now in this young season down there with 10 hits on the year already down there. Looking at the pitching staff down there for the Nashville Sounds, Tobias Myers, he's got 14 strikeouts already on this season here. And Carlos F. Rodriguez has 11 strikeouts for him. Earned runs, McKinstry, he's struggling right now. Or McKendry, he's struggling down there. 11 earned runs on this young season for the Sounds. Looking at home runs given up, this is the problem. He's got four home runs given up there. T- Tobias Myers, two home runs given up there. Jansen Junk with one home run given up on the year down there so far. Looking at innings pitched, McKendry has faced the most batters, though. 15 innings pitched down there for McKendry. Tobias Myers, he's nine and two-thirds. And Carlos F. Rodriguez in seven innings of work so far down there. We've seen some, well, I mean, we've seen some good stuff. We've seen some good stuff out of to Carlos and Tobias Myers down there. Aaron Ashby, he had that five-inning start down there for the Sounds so far here. So good stuff there coming out of the Nashville Sounds. Looking over at the Biloxi Shuckers now. The Shuckers, two and four on this young season so far. Not starting out the greatest. Not a great start, but respectable. Respectable start. Looking at the batting order for him, Ernesto Martinez Jr., he's sitting at a 316 average. Carlos D. Rodriguez, don't get him mistaken with Carlos F. Rodriguez. This is Carlos D. Rodriguez, 286 down there right now. Brock Wilkin, 167, and Eric Brown Jr., 136. Wes Clark, he's sitting 125 right now on this young season. Looking at the home runs in the minors right now, and not much going on there. Freddie Zamora, one home run, and that's about it. That's about all to talk about down there. 
Ernesto, he's leading the team in RBIs with three RBIs down there. And he's also leading in hits with six. Eric Brown Jr.'s got three, and Carlos D. Rodriguez has four. So a slow start offensively for the Biloxi Shuckers down there. So not, not great, not bad, right there. Jacob Mizorowski, he's doing well down there. 11 strikeouts here to start out his young season. And also another good prospect down there to check out, Tyler Wosner. Eight strikeouts there in his innings work there. Just looking at innings pitched so far here for this team. Looks like Jacob Mizorowski, he's pitched seven and a third. And then Tyler Wosner, he's sitting at six innings pitched down there at the double A level for the Brewers there. So, good stuff there coming out of Biloxi. We jump over to the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers, and they've had a hot start to this young season here. Four and one in this young season. Looking at batting average right now, the I mean, they have some hot hitters down there at Wisconsin High A. 500 average for Matthew Wood, catcher down there. Mike Bovey sitting at 389. Dylan O'Ray sitting at 389. Jesus Chirnos, 385, and Terrence Dotson has started 333. Jeremy Vargas, 273. So Luis Lara, a good prospect for the Brewers down there. Keep an eye on him. 263. He's got his average up a little bit down there at high A, but good stuff all the way around there. A lot of high batting averages to start this young year. Jeremy Vargas is the only guy to take somebody deep so far. He's got one home run on this young season. Yadier Arminio, though, five RBIs. We have Dylan Array with four, along with Jesus Chirnos and Gregory Barros, also with four. Mike Bovey with three, and Luis Lara with two RBIs on this young season. Bovey leads the team and hits with seven, Dylan Array with seven, and then you have a list of five here. Luis Lara, Jesus Chirnos, Gregory Barrows, and Yadier Amino all with five on the year here. So good stuff there coming out of the high A Timber Rattlers right now, four and one on this young season. Another four and one team right now, we have the Carolina Mudcats coming into this one. Four and one heading into the weekend here. And it's on the back of, you guessed it there, a lot of good hitting going on down there in uh, low A. Daniel Gilarte, 500 average right now. Tadden uh, Hall, 400 average. Yashior Garcia. Yosha War Garcia, that is a heck of a name. That is a heck of a name right there. Y-H-O-S-W-A-R. I don't know how you would say that one. There, It's probably easy, right? But I, I, I'm not good with names. We know this. You've listened to the show before. You know this. Names are a son of a gun when it comes to the Brewers there. So he's hitting 375 down there. Satchel Norman, 333. Juan Baez, 320 right now. And Yofri Rodriguez is sitting at... 286 on this young season right now. One home run from Kaylan Nicasia, right fielder down there. RBI wise, Cooper Pratt, a great prospect for the Brewers, just drafted this last year. He's got six RBIs on this young season here for the Mudcats. Hits wise, Juan Baez leads them in hits. And then you have Yafri Rodriguez with six, along with Tayden Hall and Yoshua uh, Garcia there with six also. So good stuff coming out of. The Mudcats there, hitting-wise, on the pitching side of it right now, Ryan uh, Burchard leads them in strikeouts with six, along with Josh Timmerman and Yomanar Herrera also has six on this young season here. Earned runs, not a lot of runs given up so far by this team. You have guys like Manuel Rodriguez, Aiden Maldonado, all both with three earned runs on the year. Jefferson Figuero and Yorman Galdez also has two. Josh Noth, another pitcher the Brewers drafted here this last season. He's got two. So a lot of good stuff coming out of the Mudcats right now, pitching and hitting-wise. That team has started out very well in this young season here. So with that, that is the Fresh on the Farm report for the day here. You got If, if you're around the state of Wisconsin, you got to get to a Timber Rattlers game. All good stuff there from Wisconsin. And I... You know, I believe snow is all gone now, so at least they don't have to worry about that anymore. I saw video of them shoveling that thing off before they were able to play a game. And I was like, yep, it feels like high school. Back in high school, we had a late snowstorm one year. I believe it was 2018. We had a late snowstorm. 
And our coach got so bored of us just doing the same thing over and over again. So you only do so much, right? And he got, he got sick of it, sick of it. So he takes us up to the baseball field with shovels and a snowblower and says, let's get this baby cleared off. So we spent, we spent a week of baseball practices up at the baseball field there cleaning snow, just cleaning snow every day. And it was like, oh, oh yeah, this, this makes sense. This makes sense. I'm learning a lot about baseball today. He always would make it interesting, though. He'd be like, all right. When you throw this thing of snow, I want you to swing it like your your baseball bat. So you would you would blow it up and you'd swing, and he's like, "That was wrong." I'm like, "I don't know what you want me to do. I'm swinging a shovel right now. I'm swinging a shovel full of snow, and you're telling me I'm swinging it wrong. Like, I just got a curve in the handle. What am I supposed to do right now? It's gonna look messed up." But no, I mean it was it, it was fun. It was a good time. It was a good time, good time all the way around there. I gotta say, clearing snow, I I have probably never had a better time clearing snow than clearing snow with those guys up at the baseball field. I mean, we had drifts out there that were top six two. They were taller than me. It, it was ridiculous. We had these drifts up and I had to clear them all away. We had to, we, there was no reason for it. It was snowing. It was still cold. Like it's not like we were gonna play there the next day. But we were cleaning that baby off. We can't ever get wet. He'd go. I'm like, okay, okay, I get it, I get it. Let's do it. So, so good stuff there. Uh, good stuff there coming out of the fresh out of the farm report. But with that, I want to talk a little MLB standings here quick before we move on. The Brewers have actually moved into first place in the NL Central. Thanks that well, they didn't really play a game yesterday. Whether well, it was going to be a win or a loss, they didn't play. Eight and three on the year there. The Pirates, they are tied for first there, but with a nine and four record right now. The Chicago Cubs are sitting a game and a half back. They're seven and five. The Reds at six and six, and the Cardinals at six and seven here to start the young season. Looking at run differential right now, the Brewers are plus 17 right now in run differential followed by the Pirates, who are 15, and then you have the Cubs sitting at 11 right now, and then you have the Cincinnati Reds. They're zero. They're sitting at a zero right now, 63 runs scored, 63 runs allowed on the year here. And the Cardinals, they're negative five right now, 55 runs given up there, 250 scored at the moment here. Looking at the NL East right now, the Braves coming into action into the weekend here, seven and four overall right now, plus 14 in run differential. The only team, and this is surprising, the only team in the NL East with a plus or above negative run differential on the year. You look at the Phillies in second place right now, seven and six. They have a negative four. The Mets, negative one right now. You have the Nationals, negative 14. And the Marlins, negative 30. They're two and 11 on the year right now. They are sitting 47 to 30, 77 right now, runs scored, two runs allowed. So interesting stuff right there. And then you flip script over to the NL West. You have three teams in that plus run differential. You have the Dodgers in first at 10 and 5, Padres 7 and 8, the Arizona Diamondbacks 6 and 7 right now. All those teams with a plus run differential. The Arizona Diamondbacks actually plus 17 in run differential right now. The Padres sitting at plus 5 and the Dodgers sitting at plus 13 at the moment right now. And if you want to compare the Brewers to some high-powered offenses, some high-powered teams, the Brewers sitting at 65 runs scored, the Dodgers, the Padres, the Braves, all sitting at 80s to 70s. With the Dodgers having a lot of, they have extra games in there too, which are helping them out in that aspect there. Looking at the rest of that division there, though, the Giants, 5-8, and eight, they have a negative 15 run differential, and the Colorado Rockies, 3-10. and 10. They have a negative 35 run differential right now. 54 runs scored to 89 runs allowed there. Looking over at the AL, the AL East to start it here. We got the Yankees in first place right now, 10 and 3. The Baltimore Orioles, 8 and 4. We have the Boston Red Sox, 7 and 6. The Rays at 7 and 6. And the Toronto Blue Jays at 6 and 7 right now. So good stuff there in the AL East. Not good stuff that the Yankees are up top. Nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to see the Yankees at the top of that division there. So looking at the AL Central, we've seen some surprising start, uh, hot starts here. In the AL Central, we have the Cleveland Guardians sitting at 9-3. and three. The Kansas City Royals starting at 9-4 and four right now. Detroit Tigers are sitting at 7-4. and four. The Twins at 4-6. and six. And the White Sox at 2-10 and 10 right now. I mean, you're looking at the Guardians and the Royals right now, plus 35 and plus 39 run differentials. That's crazy. That's crazy for two teams that, I mean, the Guardians have been decent over the years here, but uh, Royals, not so much. And this team, they just came off a four-game win or sweep against the Astros there. So interesting stuff there. That moves us to 
The AL West to wrap it up here. Seven and six are the Texas Rangers. The Angels coming in at six and six. The Oakland A's at five and eight. The Seattle Mariners five and eight. And the Houston Astros at four and ten on this young season here. The AL West not faring very well to start the year here. Plus 20 in run differential for the Rangers, but outside of that, a lot of negatives. A lot of negatives there down the board in the AL West. So AL West not hot to start this young season here. But with that, before we move on here, I just want you, wanted to mention a few of our sponsors here quick of the show. First Century 21 Gold Key Realty. Call Peggy Sewer or Anna to find your dream home or if you're looking to sell. Find them on Facebook at your hometown team, Century 21 Gold Key Realty, or stop in and see them at their location in Marshfield. Also, Pittsville Farm and Home Center. At the store, they serve you anything from hydraulic hoses to red roses. Stop in and see the awesome crew at Pittsville Farm and Home Center in Pittsville, Wisconsin. And also Sports Scene and Sport, Sport and Spine Clinic in Greenwood, Wisconsin. If you've been injured recently, whether it was at work, or on the baseball field, on the softball field, on the basketball court, whatever it was, and you need some physical therapy, stop in there and see Chad at Sport and Spine Clinic in Greenwood. He'll get you right. He'll get you back to work, back on the court, back on the field, whatever it is, he'll get you back there. Sport and Spine Clinic in Greenwood, Wisconsin. But with that, we got to get to the Bucks. Bucks are going to be in action twice over the weekend here to wrap up the regular season here. First, coming up tonight, they're going to have the Oklahoma City Thunder that will be at the Thunder for that game here. 7 o'clock start on NBA TV for that one. Looking at the last five of each one of these ball clubs here, we have OKC coming to this one. They're coming off wins against Charlotte, the Kings, and San Antonio there. A three-game win streak heading into this game against the Bucks here. They did lose to Boston there, 135-100, to 100, and the Pacers, 126-112, to 112 before those matchups there. So, they are three and five in their last five games there. So are three, three and five, three and two in their last five. Sorry. Bright it's it's early in the morning right now. It's early in the morning. Brain farts going on all the way around there. Three and two in their last two and three and two. I'm right. I'm right. Three and two in their last five. God, I'm, I'm confusing myself now. The Bucks heading into this series here. They are two and three in their last five games there. They got wins against the Magic and Boston as of late, but before that, losing games to the Knicks, Toronto, and Memphis before that one there. So they got it. This is going to be a big game for the Bucs here. Kind of set the tone heading into the playoffs that, hey, we can win some games. I mean, you beat a team like Boston. You beat a team in the Magic who are on the cusp of a playoff berth, and we're, I mean, right behind you in the standees there. So, Good things coming this weekend here. Bucks, Thunder, that'll be tonight here. 7 o'clock start for that game there. And then also the Bucks will be in action one more time on Sunday. That'll be a matchup at Orlando. They're going to be taking on the Magic there. That'll be a noon start for that game. And heading into this one, we have the Magic. They've, I mean, they've been playing well. 28-12 and 12 at home. They're not a good road team, but they played well at home. And they have wins against Chicago and the Pelicans in their last five there. They are two and three in their last five, losing games to Charlotte, to, uh, the Rockets, and the Bucks in that last five there. Looking at, I mean, just looking at this team here, you've seen them. You know what you're going to get. They, the Bucks so far on the season, they are two and one against this Magic team. So looking to go three and one in the regular season series against this team here. So good stuff there coming out of the Bucks. Heading into a big weekend slate here before they get some time off with the play in games happening, but then the playoffs start. Hopefully, Giannis is back and everything is good in that aspect. So, with that, looking at the NBA standings right now, kind of just where everything stands as of right now. So you're looking at you're looking at the standings right now, and you're saying to yourself, okay, the Eastern Conference is basically figured out. The Celtics, the Bucks. The Knicks, the Cavaliers, the Magic, the Pacers, the 76ers, the Heat, the Bulls, and the Hawks. Those are your 10 teams that will. Every other team has been eliminated from the picture there. So you look at a couple of teams still hanging around. The Knicks and the Cavaliers. 14 games back are the Knicks of first place, but they're a game back of the Bucks right now. So that's something to watch there. The Bucks, you still have something to play for if you are the Bucks right now to get that two seed. In the playoffs. I don't know if you want the three seed, but 
you're right now you're you're clinched a playoff berth, but you haven't clinched that two spot. So got to win these well, at least one of these next two games here, and I believe you should be okay in that aspect there. The Cleveland Cavaliers, they're sitting two games back right now, a little bit harder for them to make up ground on the Bucks there, but two two games back there. And then you have the Magic 16 games back, they're three games back in the Bucks, and the Pacers three games back. So not a lot of movement going to be happening in that area. The Sixers, 76ers could jump up into the six there. They are sitting 17 games back right now, but they have won six in a row. Ever since Joel Embiid came back, this team has been a lot better. So maybe the Bucs can avoid having to see one of those teams as a two seed if they if the Sixers pop out of there, and that would leave the Heat as the one team on the bottom half. Maybe they avoid the Sixers in the first round. It's definitely going to be something interesting there to watch. But those are your 10 teams that will be in the playoff picture in some way, shape, or form there. In the West right now, we have that one figured out also. You have teams, the Denver Nuggets, they're sitting in first place right now. The Timberwolves and Thunder are both sitting a game back. Then you have the Clippers and you have the Mavericks, five and six games back there. The Pelicans sitting eight games back. Then you have the Suns, nine games back of first place, sitting in the seventh spot. The Sacramento Kings, the Golden State Warriors, and the Los Angeles Lakers all sitting 11 games back as of right now. The Warriors, the hottest team of all of them, though. In their last 10, they are 9-1. and one. In their last 10, the Lakers 7-3 and three in their last 10. The Kings 4-6 and six in their last 10. And that's had a lot to do with why they're sitting in that 8 spot now. But there still could be a little bit of movement there. The Warriors could play themselves up to an 8 seed. We could have the Lakers playing themselves up to an 8 seed right now. The Kings staying at that 8 seed. Lots of things can still happen in that NBA picture as this weekend wraps up here. So the West, the West is a little more dicey than the East, I would say. When you look at the East... Between 8th and 10th place right now, there's an 8-game difference. I mean, you look at the Miami Heat, they're 18 games back at first. You look at the Atlanta Hawks, they're 26 games back. So you're looking at an 8-game difference there between those two teams. And then even looking at the Bulls, they're four, 24 games back. They, I mean, they're 6 games back of that 8 spot. So, eight. I mean, from 8 up, you could see some movement yet in that East. I don't expect much movement happening there at the bottom half, though, especially because the Hawks have lost actually four games in a row now heading into this final weekend. And I'm not sure. I'm just going to check it out real quick there. I'm not sure what they have left. They have the Timberwolves left, and they have the Pacers left. And the Pacers are still playing for something. They could be playing for staying out of that play-in game uh, coming up here. So it's going to be interesting to see come Sunday there, what the Pacers throw out. Because if they're still playing for a six seed at that point, if they're still trying to get that six seed, they're going to be playing everybody, and that's going to that's not going to help the Hawks out. So or t- that's not going to help them out at all there. So that, I don't know. It's going to be interesting to see where this whole thing shakes out. If the Bucks get the two, I'm hoping the Bucks get the two. I don't know. Would you want the two? Would you want the two and play? Let's just say, hypothetical world, would you want the two? If you had the matchup with the 76ers or the Heat coming out of the playing game, or would you rather have, let's just say the three seed, and you would play right now, you would have the Pacers in game one. Which one would you rather have? That's interesting. Because the Heat have always given the Bucks trouble in the playoffs. The Sixers, now that they're healthy, they're dangerous. And the Pacers, they've had the Bucks number this year. So who would you rather have? And I think it's going to be a lot. It's going to be hinging on if Giannis is back, and that's going to be a big deciding factor on if I would want any of them, right? So with that, that's about all I got for today. Brewers, Bucks coming up this weekend, wrapping up the Bucks season there before the playoffs start. Brewers just getting into the thick of things for this young season, and they got a big matchup this weekend here with the Orioles, with former Brewer Corbin Burns. Lots of good stuff there. So with that, This has been Wisconsin Sports on the Go with Trage. Thank you guys for listening. We'll catch you guys back here on Monday. But until then, I hope you guys enjoy your Friday. But until we catch you guys back here on the show on Monday, deuces. Watch me sway, darkness falls, and we all pray, hoping for 
the light of day down to the river I have held the devil's hand felt the weight of my own sin burdened by the heart of man down to the river down to the river oh. 